Hi, this is Les McCarter from Power Up Training with another of our series called YouTube Subscriber Questions. KGS wants to be able to, on demand, highlight a row or a column on a table during a slideshow presentation and be able to jump to any row or column in any order to focus the attention on the specific set of data. The question came from our PowerPoint 365 animation for Apple Mac tutorial listed above. And our solution will work with both Windows and Mac. Once you see it, the technique should open your eyes to many other creative use of the PowerPoint Zoom tool. Let's preview the solution. Here we have a table. And should our audience have a question about, say, column two, we can click and have it highlighted. When done, we can click anywhere else on the slide and return back to the main table and be ready for the next question, such as column four or row B. Each of the columns in a row have a hot spot. And so that means this is ad hoc. And when done, we can click anywhere and go on to the next slide. Here we see the steps that we're about to walk through in detail in this tutorial. But let's not worry about the steps now. They'll come naturally in a few moments. Instead, let's peek behind the curtains and see what's really happening. Here's our main slide, and on it, there are seven hidden hotspots that when clicked, they will let you jump to another slide. It's an illusion. And when done and clicked again, it returns you back to the original slide, just waiting for the next hotspot choice. Now, don't worry about writing down this list of steps. I'll be providing a link to this cheat sheet PDF at the end of our tutorial. We will work with an existing sample presentation that you can see in the slide sorter view. And I'm going to double click on the slide with a similar table from our first example. So step one is critical. Make the focus slide exactly how you want it to look. Once you do this effect, it is hard to update as you will want this slide to look exactly the same on all seven soon to be duplicated slides. Change your mind later and you're going to have to go back and edit all seven other slides. So make it right before you move on to the next steps. Step two is to duplicate the slide for as many times as you want hotspots to focus on. In our case, we need three more duplicates for the rows and four for the columns if we want to be able to dynamically highlight any data set. While this duplication process can be done in a variety of methods, I like to visually see the collection on my screen, so I will bring up the slide sort of view from the bottom right hand corner. Now with the target base slide selected, duplicate it seven times with the keyboard shortcut. For Windows, that's Control plus D, and for the Mac, it is Shift plus Command plus D. Do that seven times. Now on to step three, customizing the duplicated slides. Here, you can creatively decide how to highlight the individual items for each of the seven slides. I will create a circle from the insert shapes and then make the center fill color set to none and finally make the exterior line of the circle bright red with a bigger border. With that done, I can now copy my circle highlight tool and go to each of the six following slides and position them each on the hot data sets that I want to later highlight if asked. I'll speed this up, but do note that for the rows, I'm going to use a rectangle shape instead of the circle. And once it's inserted, I'm going to use the trick of using the format paint tool to replicate the formatting of the circle to the rectangle. Look above for our YouTube tutorial on these types of shortcuts. The other pro shortcut that I'm using is that once the object is pasted, I'm using my keyboard arrow keys to move the objects to make sure that they stay aligned. So to check on our progress, we use the original table slide as our focus slide. We duplicated it seven times with changes on each of the seven slides, focusing on a different part of each slide. That means we're ready for the magic of Zoom. So we've set the stage and now we can go into the normal slide view mode working on our original base table slide and go to the insert menu on the ribbon menu and select the drop down box by the zoom icon 
This is the same on both Windows and Mac, and on the drop-down menu, we'll select the last item called Slide Zoom. This will present all of our slides to choose from, and for this demo, I'll select just one. We'll come back in a few moments for all the others with a pro speed trick. Once selected, the target slide literally shows up as a live thumbnail that is a clickable hotspot. I say live because if it is changed in the future, the thumbnail will also change. Now I'll drag it above the fruit column as this will be our clickable hotspot and then resize it so it's just above that column and only that column. To see this work, we need to run the slideshow. But if I click the top left shortcut slideshow icon, it will start from slide one. I want to start on slide five. So here's another pro tip. Use the screen icon on the bottom right hand corner to launch into the slideshow from the current slide. And here is a slideshow with the visible hotspot. Click it once and it zooms via a growing transition to the highlighted slide of column one. Not exactly our goal, but close. And it turns out there's one more issue. When clicked again, it does not return back to the original slide, but moves us to the next one of the pet column. So we've got two things to fix. All of the zoom modifications are found in a context aware menu. Context aware means that when you click an object, a very specific menu pops up and it is specific to the object. In our case, the zoom tool. One more thing. There's a very small difference between the Windows version and the Mac OS version, and that is simply the wording. The Mac version calls it the Zoom tool, and Windows simply calls it Zoom. Everything else is exactly the same. To be clear, I will call it the Zoom tool menu to distinguish it from the actual Zoom objects. Now, let's fix our two problems. The first being is that we want the highlight slide to return back to our main slide after showing it. And that is a simple click of the return to zoom checkbox. Turn it on. And our second issue is that we don't want it to zoom into the slide with the transition. We want to jump straight to the modified data set focus slide. So we turn off the zoom transition. Let's test it out. So now when we click the zoom hotspot, it takes us straight to the slide without the zoom transition visual effect, giving the appearance that the click made the red circle pop up on the fruit column. And for our second change, when we're done with this slide view, a click has us jump back to the original base slide. We have another cleanup action to perform, and that is to make our zoom hotspot disappear and turn it into an invisible clickable hotspot. The way we do this is if we're gonna change the image to an invisible object. With the zoom object selected, we click the zoom tool context menu and then select change image. We can turn it into almost anything, but here's our situation. My current background is not a solid color, so I can't select a solid color square icon. I need an invisible object, and that is something called a transparent image. Do a Google search for transparent image PNG or look for our cheat sheet for a link to some of these transparent images. So I'm going to change the image from a file on my computer. I'm going to look for the transparent empty PNG image file that I've already downloaded onto my computer. And once selected and inserted, our zoom image is now a transparent empty square. Now, when we run the slideshow, we have a more natural slide without the clutter of the zoom thumbnail. And we can see where our hotspot click is for us to highlight the fruit data set. And with another click, we're able to then return back to our main slide. Don't worry, we will fix the small border outline in a few moments. But first, let me zip through the steps to add all the other six hotspots. I'm speeding this up, but following all the exact same steps with one small addition. I'll be adding all the zoom slides in the first step by selecting them all before inserting. And when the collection of zoom slides are inserted, they are all selected. So we can save some time by shrinking them down as a group to fit above the column widths. 
Once they're the right size, we can then sort and move them around. With them in place, let's test them out before adding the finishing touches. So if I click, for example, technology that's highlighted or transportation and that column's highlighted, which means everything is working. So let's go to the finishing touches of one, turning off zoom transitions, two, turning on the return to zoom, and three, changing the image to the transparent PNG image file for all six icons. So the last step, getting rid of all those image borders. I saved this for last so that I can visually see what I'm working with before finalizing the setup. Then click one or all the individual transparent image hotspots and go to the zoom tool, select zoom border and choose no outline. Let me repeat that for the column headings. I'm gonna select all four of them and then I'm gonna go to the zoom tool. I'm gonna choose a zoom border and no outline and bingo, all of our borders have now disappeared. And now it would seem that we have this just right. In the slideshow, we can jump to any column or row to highlight our data sets. This is cool, but with one last problem. If we're done with this slide and we proceed with our slideshow, the very next slide is our root highlight slide, which if you think about it, this should be no surprise as that slide follows our main table slide in the order of our slide deck. But that's an easy fix. We need to make sure that all of our supporting highlight data focus slides are moved to the end of the slideshow. And that's easily done in the slide sort of view where we can grab the group and move them to the end of the show. And that should do it. Except I have one more trick just for the Windows users, but I hope Microsoft adds this to the Mac version soon. This is a super fast way to add Zoom files. On my new slide here, I want to add four slides as Zoom objects. But instead of doing an insert and zoom menu, then selecting the slides, I can simply use the normal standard view and drag my desired slides from the left onto the canvas. And bingo, they are now zoom slide objects. Let's check it out. In slideshow mode, I can click on any one of the images and it's going to transition zoom up because we didn't make that change. And when I click, it returns back to the base slide and we can jump in any order we desire to see our slides. Once again, that's very slick. To get the detailed one page cheat sheet in PDF format, go to our website of HTTPS power dash up dot training or see the link below in the YouTube notes. As always, thanks to our subscribers and for the questions they submit. If you got a question or a tutorial request, Leave them below in the notes and I'll see if we can do them. Subscribe so you don't miss any of our Microsoft Office Power Up tutorials. And until next time, power up.